Today's video is brought to you by Cars and Bids, my online enthusiast car auction site that recently sold this and this and this and this and this. Check it out at carsandbids.com. This is the new 2024 Aston Martin DB12, and it's impressive. 670 horsepower, tremendously fast, absolutely beautiful, and a big upgrade over the outgoing DB12. It also carries a massive sticker price, starting around $250,000, although this one has a hundred grand in options for a $350,000 total price. Today, I'm going to review the DB12 and show you everything. All right, time for the DB12. But first, I want to thank Aston Martin of Newport Beach for letting me borrow this DB12 to make this video. Aston Martin Newport Beach is the number one Aston Martin dealer in the world. They've got all of the new Astons, the DBX 707, the DBS, the Vantage, and of course, the new DB12. So thanks to Aston Newport Beach. You can check them out with the links in the description below. And and now it's time for the quirks and features of the DB12. And we're going to start under the hood. And by the way, to get under the hood, you first have to go into the passenger side footwell. That's where the hood latch is in this car, because Aston Martin is British, and so it's initially made as right-hand drive, where that would be the driver's side footwell. And they don't bother to change it when they move it over to left-hand drive. That is certainly a quirk of Aston Martin. but under the hood. This is where you see one of the major changes compared to the outgoing DB11, because Aston is no longer offering this car with a V12 engine. Instead, the DB12 is only available with the twin-turbo 4-liter V8 that Aston uses from Mercedes-AMG. Now, it's worth pointing out that despite losing the V12, this car gains power. The DB11 was offered with this V8, where it made 530 horsepower or a V12 that made 630, well now the V8 makes 670 horsepower. So it's more power than the DB11's V8 or its V12. So how did they get this much more power from this engine? Well, there's a lot of changes. You got new larger turbochargers, you got dramatically improved engine cooling, a revised compression ratio, and a lot of other little stuff that allowed them to boost the power from from 530 in the old V8 to 670 here. And performance is impressive. Zero to 60 in three and a half seconds, Aston says, and a top speed of more than 200 miles per hour. And one lovely Aston quirk, this engine still has a plaque on it, reminding us that it was hand built in Great Britain with a final inspection by Ahmed Munir. Thank you, Ahmed. It's a treat. <laughs> Now, the next interesting thing about the DB12 is it's not all that different from the DB11, at least on the outside. Under the hood, that's a pretty significant change, and inside there are some big changes too, but outside it certainly isn't the massive difference we've come to expect when Aston Martin switches numbers from the DB7 to the DB9. Back in 2005, for example, that was a big change, and when the DB9 became the DB11, in 2017, that too was huge. The DB12 feels a little bit more like a facelift rather than a full, completely new redesigned update, particularly from the outside. In back, for example, it's pretty similar. You have a relatively similar looking rear end, and that includes these wonderful thin taillights that look really cool when they're on, but they also looked cool in the DB11. Basically the same in the rear. Now, the front does design of the DB12 is different than the DB11. The general look is a little bit different, a little more modern, a little changed, and the headlights are totally new and pretty cool. When the car's just driving along, the running lights are these six like light blocks that are always on, and they look absolutely fantastic. And when you go to turn on the turn signal, the light blocks on that side start blinking as the turn signal and no longer the running light. It's a neat looking new 
new headlight and a change to the DB12 compared to the DB11. But other than that, you have a generally pretty similar look, shape, profile. Now it's worth pointing out, that's not necessarily a bad thing. The DB11 was absolutely beautiful. It's hard to believe it's been out for seven years and the DB12 just carries on the gorgeous styling of its predecessor. Still a tremendously attractive car, now just tweaked to become the DB12. And a couple of other little new things on the outside. For one, this is the first car to come with Michelin Pilot Sport 5S tires. This is a brand new tire developed by Michelin, replacing the famed 4S. Now it's the 5S and now it's on the DB12. This is also the first car to come with Aston Martin's new emblem, which is this. You might think it looks a lot like Aston Martin's old emblem, and you are correct. It has a new font for Aston Martin, and the wings have changed a little bit, but generally speaking, they look about the same. Still, it's a subtle, small change, but a change nonetheless, much like well, the rest of the DB12. But anyway, next up we move inside the DB12, where, like I mentioned, you have undoubtedly the most significant change compared to the outgoing DB11. This car has a totally new interior, new technology, replacing the kind of old school dated interior that the DB11 had. But before I show it to you, let's start with the key, which is this. At the top, you have a little glass section with the Aston Martin logo in it. This is a turn to form. Aston Martin had glass topped keys for a while, then they ditched it. Now it's back and it looks cool. Press the unlock button on the key and you can see the door handle pops out. It presents itself to you so you can pull on it and open up the door. And the door, of course, is Aston Martin's swan door. It opens a little bit upwards to look exotic and cool and to help it clear curbs since it's a low car. And like previous Aston Martins, the door stays open in the spot where you open it. It doesn't just have a couple positions where it'll open. You can kind of place it wherever you want, which is a cool touch. Now on the inside of the door, the door panel, you can see beautiful leather and fine stitching and carbon fiber and aluminum. It's got all of the luxury stuff and it looks nice. But anyway, climb inside the DB12, go to start it. You can see the start stop button is right here in the center with the Aston Martin logo, a big focal point in this interior interior, and there's a dial that rims this start-stop button, goes around it. This is your drive mode dial, and you can select between individual mode, GT, which is sort of like the normal luxury mode, and then Sport or Sport Plus. And this dial just feels wonderful to twist. It has a nice look and feel and weight, and it's fantastic. Now, around the dial, you can see, well, a few more dials that control mainly climate. This is fan speed speed and temperature, driver passenger side, plus this one is stereo volume. These also look good and feel good and have a nice weight. It almost seems like a finely crafted watch, which I'm sure Aston Martin owners will appreciate. They'll probably also appreciate the fact that the climate controls are not integrated into the screen. They're on these dials and this row of buttons below the screen, that's how you adjust everything. Now, also in this brand new center control stack, you get a few especially cool buttons. You can see the one for the exhaust back here. When it's in normal mode, it's just white like all the other buttons. But if you press it, it turns orange to let you know you're in sport mode. But check this out. Press it again and it turns red to let you know you're in sport plus mode. And the suspension does the same thing. White, orange, or red, three different colors for three different settings. Instead of a dial or a screen, it's in the button, which is kind of a cool, neat little way to do that. And of course, this car, the big AMG V8 tuned for extra grunt, well, it sounds pretty good. I can't rev it all the way when I'm parked, but you'll get the idea with this little rev in Sport Plus mode. Take a listen. Now, 
Now, other items worth pointing out here on this center control stack, the obvious one is right in the center. This switch that sticks up is your gear selector, sort of similar to the one in the new Porsche 911. You move it up for reverse, down for drive, P, park is a little button on the side, and then manual mode is down below. You push that to go permanently into manual mode until you push it again. And also worth pointing out with this center control stack area, below it, you have a wireless charging pad. So you can stick your phone here, charge it wirelessly. It is branded Aston Martin. It looks nice, even though you can't even really see it. But that's how Aston does. Now, one surprise that I have in this car is that there's not really all that much Mercedes Benz in this interior. Aston Martin borrows Mercedes AMG's powertrain. And in the past, their vehicles have used varying levels of Mercedes parts and components. But here, it's not really very Mercedes Benzy. The most obvious Mercedes piece is this turn signal stock, which is borrowed right out of many different Mercedes Benz models over the last few years. But other than that, it's not too Mercedes y. The steering wheel is similar to a recent Mercedes wheel, but with new button switch gear, it barely even looks like it. And the infotainment system in the center isn't really Mercedes Benz. It's not the same technology. It's Aston Martin, which makes you a little anxious because what does Aston know about making an infotainment system? The answer is actually it's pretty decent, surprisingly responsive to your touch, surprisingly easy to use, intuitive with no glaring errors or issues. I like it well enough and I specifically like a few things about it. The camera system is fantastic. You can see going into reverse you have great high resolution backup and top down camera but you also have a full 360 camera that you can move around the car. You don't see this very often in exotic cars, even though they're the ones where you want it the most because little scrapes can get very expensive. You want to make sure you see exactly where you are, you can in this car. I also like the home screen. It shows several different things at once. So you have a bunch of different pieces of information right at your disposal. And I love the quick climate control options where you can get in the car and just press warm hands or warm feet and the car will adjust the climate control correspondingly without you having to select the temperature where you want the airflow to come. Just tap that little shortcut and it goes. That's a neat idea. Now, as for the other screen in this car, the gauge cluster screen, it's also pretty good and surprisingly configurable for an exotic car. You have two panels left and right that you can use to adjust various things. You can have the navigation map there or the media you're listening to or a trip odometer or your phone or car information. It's all pretty adjustable, pretty configurable, which again, you don't often see in an exotic sports car. Now, this gauge cluster screen is very Mercedes-Benz-esque. I'm not sure if that's where the technology came from for this screen, but it's about how Mercedes-Benz does it. And frankly, it works in Mercedes-Benz models and it works here too. Pretty good, pretty configurable gauge cluster screen display. And next up, we move on to the back seats. Yes, this car has back seats inexplicably. They are tremendously tiny, but I will try to fold myself into them now. Oh, oh, don't try this at home. Oh, <laughs> really small. And I could never get the driver's seat back with me in the back seat, but the back seats are here. They exist. They don't have any amenities or creature comforts. The windows don't roll down. There's no heated seats back here, no separate volume controls. You just have two extra back seats where you can put people if you absolutely had to in an emergency. There is basically no room back here, leg room as you can see, but also headroom, although I suspect that will eventually change. Aston Martin hasn't announced it yet, but a DB12 convertible will surely come soon in addition to this coupe model and then you have all the headroom you want in the back seat although it's still gonna be really really tight back here and next up we move on to the trunk now annoyingly there is not a button back here that you can use to open up the trunk you walk up to the car you can't just push a button and open it instead you got to use this button on the driver's door panel push that and the trunk opens or there's a button on the key fob you press it and the trunk unlatches and then you can open it up. A little bit annoying. Now once you open the trunk you can see well 
there's a box in here. What exactly is this box? It comes with a DB12, and it's a presentation case. You open it up on one side, and that's where the key is presented to you. You open it up on the other side, and that's where the owner's manual is presented to you. A very luxurious car, of course, comes with a very luxurious presentation case. Did your plebeian vehicle not have such an item? Beyond the presentation case, the trunk isn't particularly noteworthy. It's big enough, but not huge, about what you'd expect from an exotic car. But if you combine the trunk with the back seats, which will be used more for storage than back seats, you do have decent cargo space in the DB12. Next up, we move to the trunk lid, where you see the word Aston Martin written across the back. A new growing trend in the car industry. Porsche has started to write Porsche across the back of its cars. Lexus has started to write Lexus instead of just the L logo, and even Tesla Tesla is moving to it on the new Model 3. I've heard this is for the Chinese market, where people may not be familiar with just the logo. They're spelling it out to make it that obvious exactly what car you're looking at. Next quirk, these little bumperettes next to the license plate, which are apparently regulatory. They look stupid, but they help the car pass some arcane crash test rule, and previous Aston Martin models have had them too. You'll also notice them on, for example, the Porsche Boxster right next to the license plate. They don't stick out as much as the ones on the DB12, but they're there for the same purpose. Finally, we can also check out this color, this very beautiful satin green color. Aston Martin apparently calls this color Aston Martin Racing Green with a satin finish, and the satin finish costs $15,000 extra. And the option craziness goes from there, as this car has around $100,000 in options. So, what else? Well, check out the carbon fiber on the outside. It looks very nice, this lower carbon fiber piece on the rocker panel. Also, this gorgeous carbon fiber on the rear pillar going over the glass and the door and the window and on the mirror there's more carbon fiber that looks great and same deal with these vents on the side that say Aston Martin written in carbon fiber all gorgeous but the total cost of all this carbon fiber $23,000 extra that's a huge number for carbon fiber and it continues with this carbon fiber inlay on the center control stack these small pieces cost $4,300 extra which is obviously big money but that's what you'd expect for a dealer demo car which is exactly what this is. All right, driving the DB12. All right, one thing I noticed right away driving this car, it feels very solid. I love this powertrain. I've loved it in various AMG vehicles. This is the most powerful version of this powertrain, I think. And boy, does this car just feel solid. It doesn't necessarily feel heavy, but it feels really like you're like you're in something that is well-made and, and structurally sound, which is nice. And boy, is it fast. You know, Aston Martin, get some crap that I'm using this powertrain. There's pros and cons of that. There's obviously a lot of uh, parts and, and reliability that benefit that comes from that and, and cost savings. Um, but some people don't like that an Aston Martin is a Mercedes-Benz powertrain. It's just so good, though. It's such a great engine. It's great in all those cars, and it's great here, too. And this car has a lot more power, and you can tell instantly there's an enormous amount of mid-range. The sound is fantastic. I mean, Aston has tuned this to make it more Aston-y, and it feels like that. It feels like a faster and even more exciting version of this same engine. Oh. Man, this thing is fast, and it sounds great. Oh! The thing I always liked about the DB11 is that it was able to give you kind of a grand touring feel or a crazy sports car feel. And this car so clearly does the same. Oh, it feels like both a luxury car and a serious sports car, if that's what you're looking for. I mean, the acceleration is just fantastic. Yes, you don't have a V12, and there is that sadness of the, you know, the a V12 is like a special thing, but from a performance perspective, it's just like when the Ford GT went to a V6. It performed as well as it needed to, even if it didn't quite have all the cylinders people wanted. But it's so nice in here too. You have this like actually nice, luxurious interior that feels good. You have all the nice stuff. Everything looks nice. And frankly, it's a big step up over the DB11, which the interior was a little, it was starting to get old for sure, but also it always to me felt a little cartoonish. Some of the buttons, some of the way things were placed, this is a more serious, more luxurious interior, more befitting a car of this price point and kind of brand level. Oh, that sound. 
I'm in sport plus mode and the exhaust is in its most sport plusian mode. And so that gives you a big sound. You can go back to GT mode and have a more rational experience if that's what you're looking for. But why would you if you don't have to? <laughs> Despite the fact that this is a fairly large, fairly grand touring -y car, it has the sports car feel to it that is quite impressive. It is not as comfortable as a Bentley, but it is sportier. So on that continuum of like crazy 911 GT3 all the way to like a Rolls Royce Dawn, it is closer to the sporty side, um, but also has a lot of nice luxury stuff and of course great tech like I showed you before. Oh, this car just pulls and pulls even in a fairly high gear here. Oh, it's got so much torque and so much power. Mm. Also very smooth shifts, which is nice to see. You know, there was that period where Aston Martin used those sport shift and the sequential manuals and kind of developed a rep for some rougher transmissions, but this car does not have that problem. It's a very nice, very smooth, even when you're going hard in Sport Plus and upshifting, everything seems great. It's also quiet. Sitting at a stoplight, you don't really hear all that much. It's kind of nice. It's just, it feels like a luxury car. And that's kind of the thing that Aston has always done well. The steering feel is really impressive. It is really quick and precise. The automakers have realized that's what people are looking for. More than handling, they're looking for really quick steering. That makes people feel really happy. And this car delivers it in a surprising way. Handles great too. I mean, I haven't taken on any crazy curvy tight roads, but like I said, the steering was quick and more Importantly, the car feels really stable. Uh, the, the wheels are obviously wide. It's got a wide track to it, and it feels stable when you're when you're pushing it hard, uh, as you'd expect at this price point and in 2024 and at this dollar level. But um, it just feels it feels like you are very confident in this car and like you can know what you're doing very quickly. And so that's the new 2024 Aston Martin DB12. It's beautiful, it's fast, it's much improved. It's the new standard for Aston Martin. And now it's time to give the DB12 a Doug score. And the Doug score is here, 68 out of 100, which places the new DB12 here against rivals. It outshines the outgoing DB11, which makes sense as it's a much nicer interior and improved performance. And the DB12 also beats out some other luxury performance cars, like the Bentley Flying Spur W12, even though the Bentley has the added advantage of more doors. Overall, the DB12 is excellent, not hugely different from the DB11, but better in the ways that especially matter. And it'll be a nice shot in the arm for Aston's aging lineup.